Welcome back all of you to the next decision on efficient procurement implementation. We are into accounting now. So we are going to say about how the accounting takes place now. Fine. We are going to concentrate on the charge accounting now. So let me go inside. <clears throat> So this I normally used to demonstrate in uh, <coughs> EBIS on a PTP life cycle. Fine. Here what happens, I'll be having uh, an item cost of 10 and then uh, afterwards uh, what happens, I'll be making a purchase order at 11 and then I'll now make an invoice at $13. Fine. Uh, in India it's not allowed at all. on the PU price only you can do it now. But uh, uh, there are certain things what happens whenever you have a multiple currency, uh, if you're doing it on a different currency than the functional currency, the invoice price may vary now. So uh, we used to demonstrate on, a, on a, a standard costing organization. So accounting takes place in five zones actually. When a PO is created, there is no accounting at all. There is no accounting at all. So when you receive in the gate, what happens? The receiving inspection account is now hit on the debtor side, and then the accrual is now hitting on the creditor side. Accrual is nothing but a notional liability. It says that how much of money we owe to the customers, uh, suppliers basically. Find this much of money we owe it. So accrual has to get accrued and then uh, what happens, uh, we have to clear the accrual, relieve the accrual actually. Then once when you deliver it, what happens, the material, inventory material like value will be hit, this is called the charge account. So the inventory value, uh, material value will be hit at as well. And then here I have shown a PPV. PPV is applicable only for standard costing organization. If it is an average to costing organization, it will not be applicable. Here we will be testing an average now. And then the contra entry is receiving inspection account that gets knocked off. Fine. Once when the material is delivered. So once when you receive in the gate, these two entries are getting made now. The receiving inspection to accrual. And then once when it is delivered, what happens? You'll be having these two accounts of what? Your charge account to the receiving inspection account. Fine. So the receiving inspection gets knocked off. After two stages of accounting, you will be having what? The accrual to charge, which will be remaining now. Accrual to charge will be remaining. Now, what happens? The supplier is now pro 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 giving you an invoice. So we are going to obtain the line level distribution by relieving the accrual, by matching it. You will now make a PO match or a result match by which what happens? The accrual gets relieved. So this 11,000 gets knocked off at this stage. It gets knocked off. And then afterwards, you will be having the IPV. If it is a multiple currency, what happens? You'll be doing it. To simulate it, what happens? I have given a 13 rupees. But in reality, what happens? Whenever there is a foreign currency payment is involved, then what happens? The IPV will be hit now. Then afterwards, you'll be having the distribution, the miscellaneous expenses and tax claimed by the supplier. And the total invoice value is now, let's say, in this case, 15,400. And so the actual liability gets created in zone three. So once when you're the a when the payables clerk is now creating the invoice and then validating it, upon validation, what happens? The actual liability is created. So the accrual is already knocked off from here to here is knocked off. Then the charge account to liability will be the only accounting entries which will be left after zone three of entry. After zone three of accounting, what happens? Your charge account to liability will be left now. Then what happens? He'll be preparing a check now. Fine. So once the check is prepared, so the liability gets relieved and then the cash clearing will be hit now. Fine. So now charge to cash clearing will be the accounting entry which will be left after zone four entries now. Then once when you perform the cash management reconciliation, fine. what happens? The cash clearing gets relieved and then what happens? The cash is getting it now. So in a procure to pay life cycle, accounting takes place in five zones. In five zones, accounting takes place. And then the final entry is what? The charge account to cash account are the only remaining entries which will be there now. So every company will be very much interested upon for what they have paid actually. Fine. There is a very big analysis which will be taking place. So the charge account to cash account are the ultimate one. So the charge account can be hit in six many ways actually. So we are going to see this now. Find how the charge account is going to hit now. So the charge account is a very important one. There are six many ways of uh, creating the charge account. We are going to see this now. Fine. How to create the charge account and go there. So we'll now have one more uh, this thing now. Fine, go there. I made uh, one more uh, this thing. Fine, go there. This is called asset expense item. Fine. There is a file called asset expense item in your this thing. You can go there. So here, uh, if the inventory item is on, and then the inventory asset value is also on, this is known as asset item. So let us now go and then create an item, asset item, fine, go there. So let us go there, and then let us now create an asset item. Now. <clears throat> so go there, go to the place, go to the items, master items. I'm now beginning my demonstration in EBIS, and then afterwards I will now come to Fusion now. Go there, I will now create an account, now. Fine. an item now. Fine. Let me create an item now. So I'm going to create an asset item. <clears throat> I go there, it is N10. Uh, uh, underscore asset item. Is it an asset item? I'm not creating it. I will not go to the tools. I will not click on the tools and then go to the copy organization now. 
so by which i will now apply a template of purchased item template the purchased item template is applied and then i go to the purchasing and then i will now give it this price and this price now you can see on the inventory as soon as i apply template what happens the inventory item is on as well as if you go to the costing what happens the inventory asset value is on if these two attributes are on this is known as an asset item so let us not create it now my controls commit so we are not creating the asset item and let me go on the assign it to the organization tools organization assignment let me assign it to an organization i am now assigning the organization fine it is now assigned <coughs> now let us now create an expense item so here in this case for an expense item if you go then see right if uh if the inventory asset value is off it is known as an expense item fine that means what the item has got no cost but it will be having a price actually like what i go, you are now going to buy let us say screws every screw is now costing you 10 paisa and you are going to put some 10 screws on the monitor for tightening it actually but what happens the 10 screws will now cost you totally only 1 rupee but the total manufacturing cost if you see including your picture tube motherboard etc etc the resource workers everything let us say it is now going to cost you 1500 rupees so 1501 will be the cost including the screws now but what happens this being a very minimal one but the cost price is mainly used for deriving the selling price actually they will now put a 20% margin and then they will now say it is 1800 as a selling price so the one will be basically causing a big uh, problem as far as uh, what happens uh, the costing as well as the selling is concerned now so they will now make it as an expense item so expense item will not be having any cost now so expense item will not be having any cost so the cost of the item is zero whereas the purchase price is 10 paisa so that such low cost items will be considered as expense item so we'll now make it as an expense now fine go there let us now go and get an expense item over here control down arrow we'll go there and then i'll now say en10 underscore expense item <coughs> So we are now creating an expense item now. Expense item. I will now go there and then apply the template again. If I am copy from the same template, I am applying it. Click on OK. And then I am going to make it as an expense item. So I go to the costing area. In the costing area, if I remove the inventory asset value, what happens? It becomes an expense item. It is same in fusion also. If this is removed, it becomes an expense item. What else? So item is now removed. If I go there. So uh, yeah, item will be having an expense account also. I guess this. <clears throat> so it's now remote. If you go to the purchasing, what happens? I'll be having an expense account. So let me assign it to the organization now. <clears throat> this is an org controlled attribute. So we'll be seeing what exactly is a master controlled attribute and org controlled attribute in inventory training actually. It is an org controlled attribute. You go to the tools and then I go to the what's called organization assignment. Let me assign it to the org. Assign it to the org. And then here, what I'm going to do is I will now go to the org attributes of this now. If I click on the org attributes. So here, what happens? I'm now going to give the expense item of the item, items expense account. I'm going to give it now. Fine, go there. So as per the plan, I will now modify now. Fine, go there. Now see this now. Fine, I will now this is now close it now. Go there. Here, I will now going to modify now. Items expense account here. You can now see what happens account. Fine, what items expense account? I'm going to put a zero two five two zero seven five three zero and then ending in two sixty. Fine, this is what I'm going to simulate now. Fine, zero two five two zero. So let me make a change now. Fine, drop it off and then make a change now. So I will now <coughs> make a change to zero two now. Fine. So the final segment is two sixty. Fine. The final segment is two sixty. So I will now make a change as per the plan. Actually, we are not playing a game now. Got us. Then survey. So this becomes the items expense account on the org parameter they are doing because it's org controlled attribute. And so what happens? I am not going to the organization level. I am doing it. Those who don't know EBIS, don't worry about it. Fine. Then try to concentrate only on the uh, uh, fusion side actually. So zero two five two zero seven five three zero two sixty is the plan. Fine, go us. Items expense account has been created. Fine, go there. Go us. And then apart from that, what happens? We will now see uh, some more thing on the sub inventory level. When now you are performing a transaction, fine, go there, close it now. Fine, the items expense account is now set as such. Now fine, go there. So the expense items expense account is now set. Fine, go there. We will now go to the sub inventory. Fine. Yes. Oh yes, is the navigation now. Fine. We will now go to the inventory. Sorry. We will now go to the inventory. So let us now go to the inventory. And then go to the navigation. Yes. Oh yes. Yes, oh yes, is the navigation now? I'm sorry, there no collapse or yes, oh yes, is the navigation now? It is called setup organization sub inventories. Here, what happens? We'll now see for M1 organization. <coughs> so we'll also here also what happens? We'll now as per the plan, we'll now do, we have an expense sub inventory. I've already created now. So the expense sub inventory. Fine. We'll now see the expense account. Fine. First is stores is an asset sub inventory. Stores. Uh, what happens? Your expense account. I got to set it now. Fine. Go there and see. It's now fine. We'll now go and then query. First stores. I'm now query. Stores. I'm querying it now. So stores. Let me query it now. So query it. I will now go to the expense account. Fine. Go further, further. 
you know see the expense account on this <clears throat> so the expense account is 7520735300 so stores expense account similarly expense subunitary is expense account also i'm going to make it sir thank you that let us not worry the expense subunitary expense subunitary i'm going to write now and then expense subunitary is expense account is 03520 and then ending in 110 Zero three five twenty seven five zero ending in one day. So all the accounts are set now. Now we are going to perform the transaction and see how the accounting takes place now. Fine. The charge account can be populated in six many ways now. So we are going to see the charge account getting populated on this. Fine. Charge account is a very important one as far as the end client is concerned. So we are going to see about how these accounts are getting now. Fine. If it is going to be an asset transaction, what happens? The organization parameter will be having a charge middle account that will be the charge account. Fine. The middle account with the charge account. Fine. Close it now. So here. What happens? You go to set up organization parameters. In the organization parameters of an of an organization, what happens? They'll be having the middle account. That will be the charge account. In in fusion, also the same thing. Fine, go there. So everything has been pushed into costing basically in fusion. In the cost information, what happens? This becomes the charge account for an asset item. So when you perform an asset transaction into an asset sub inventory, this becomes the charge account. Zero one zero 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 one four one zero. Fine, you can now see zero zero one zero one zero. This becomes the charge account. The sub inventories expense account will never become the charge account as long as you are transacting asset into an asset sub inventory. The sub inventory is an asset sub inventory. What happens? And then you have an expense sub inventory where what happens? Uh, it will be what happens? Uh, the sub inventory will be an expense if this is off. You will not have a look at it also. Fine, go there. You will not have a look at the asset sub inventory expense inventory. Before which what happens? You don't go there. And then you go to the other other account. Here what happens? The IPV as well as accrual are taken from the other accounts, whereas in fusion everything is from the the cost management only. Fine, these accounts are picked up from this place now. Whereas in in fusion, if you go there, everything is now picked up from the costing. Fine, there is a separate area for costing, and then from there what happens? All the accounts are picked actually. Everything has been pushed over there also. So this is one thing. And then afterwards what happens? We go there and then close it now. Fine. So we'll now go and then have a look at this. What happens? Say, your sub inventory fine. Yes, oh yes, and then enter it now. I will now go and then query this now. Fine stores. Fine. Let me go and then what happens? I'll now say F eleven, F six, F eleven. Final stores. If you query it, what happens? You cannot see it's an asset sub inventory because the quantity tracked as an asset sub inventory are wrong. That means what? It's an asset sub inventory. You know, make it as an expense sub inventory. You now go and then query an expense sub inventory. Fine. Expense. So here, what happens if asset sub inventory is off? It is an expense sub inventory. It's the same case in infusion also. Fine. If the asset sub inventory is off, it is an expense sub inventory. So the second app. So everything is now fully set. Now we are going to see all the six ways of charging. Actually, we are going to see the six ways of charging. The first one is what asset into an asset sub inventory. Fine. Stores is an asset sub inventory, whereas expense sub inventory is an expense sub inventory. So our item is an asset item, and then I am going to transact an asset asset sub inventory. Fine. The orders. So all the raw materials sub assemblies are coming under the picture. Fine. Go there. Let us now perform the transaction. And then we are going to see about how the PO charge account, the charge account can be done in six many ways. We are going to see this now. Fine, go there. So let us now go switch responsibility to purchasing. We will not go on the trade. Fine, go to the purchase orders. Let us now create a purchase order for this. Go there. So let us now put some supplier. Fine, go there. I don't have our supply ready. Fine, let us now put some other supplier over there. Fine, go there. Let us now put an item. So N10 asset item is there. Fine, N10 percentage. Let us now put the asset item over here. Fine, N10 asset item. I am putting it now. Go there. Let me go on. Go on. It is now. So go to the shipments, and then in the shipments, what happens? We have to all the have all the four parameters: the org, location, quantity, and dates are mandatory. If you try to commit, it will not say no, because what happens? Either the PD or a NPD is a mandatory one. One of them is a mandatory one. Fine. Go there. Will not give this PD over here now. The PD is a promise date. I'm giving it. I go to the distributions. I go to the distributions. Now here, what happens? I'm going to transact an asset submit. Fine. Go there. Asset submit. I'm going to put it. So we put it. You can now see the PO charge account coming up. So when you transact an asset item into an asset sub inventory, the material account which is there on the organization parameter that becomes the charge account. You know, and go there. You know, commit, commit, plus commit. The material account which is now put on the organization parameter that has become the charge account. So this is the first way of charging. So there are six many ways of charging. The first way of charging is complete. Any doubts? Good. We will now see the second way of charging. When you perform the same transaction onto an expense sub inventory, fine. Item is an asset item, fine. And then sub inventory is an expense sub inventory. When you do that, what happens? You cannot see when you are performing it. The expense sub inventory's expense account will now become the charge account. When you perform an asset item into an expense sub inventory, the expense item, fine. The middle charge account will no more be the charge account of this now, fine. The expense sub inventory's expense account will now become the charge account. Now go and make a change now, fine. Go there. This expense. 
and then make a change and then commit. So the moment I commit it, whatever they can see. Expense of inventory is expense account. 0, 3, 5, 20, ending in 110 becomes a charge account. This is the second way of charging. Fine. So we have completed out of six ways. Two ways have been completed now. In hours. So asset into an asset means what? Only the organization's parameter will now come over here now. But if you transact it into an expense of inventory, expense of inventory is the expense account becomes the charge account. Because what happens, the company always wanted to know against what they have made the pay cash now. Right? Charge to cash is the ultimate accounting entries on a PTP life cycle. So they will be very much interested upon for which account they have made the payment. Right? <clears throat> now, we go there for the third one. Third one is what? Items, expense, expense item, I'm going to put it now. Right? Item is an expense account. Fine, go there. We'll not put an item. Fine, go there. Close it now. Close it. We'll not put the popular the expense item over here now. Fine, go there. So I will not pop it as expense item. N10 percentage, and then give it a tap. Sorry. This is the N10 percentage, and then give it a tap. <clears throat> I will not put the expense item over here now. I'm going to go for 200 quantities on this one. And then go to the shipments now. And then go to the distributions. Accounting distributions we are seeing now. If I click on the distributions, I am seeing running out. For lead bit, it is not. I go there. For the lead is a mandatory one. I go there. Click on the distributions. Now, if you don't put any sub inventory at all, what happens? The expense account of the item will now become the charge account. You know, so it is 0, 02 520 7530 260 will be the charge account. If, give a comment. if there is no sub inventory to the right, you cannot see. Items expense account will now become the charge account. 0, 02 520 7530 260 is the charge account. But the moment you put the sub inventory, the sub inventory's expense account becomes the charge account. We put the sub inventory. Let's say I will now put stores over here now. Find stores. Every sub will be having an expense account and that will become the charge account. Find go on the commit. You cannot see. It is 70, 520, 7530. 70, 520, 7530. In one of the projects, what happens is the customer asked, fine, the sub inventory's expense account should not come. If it is an expense item, I want only the expense account has to be the charge account irrespective of the sub inventories. So that has been customized on the charge account generator. So there is a model called charge account generator with which what happens the defaulting the default sets have been changed actually. So in Fusion also what happens if we have the default sets and then uh, that's slightly uh, slightly different from uh, what happens EBIS. But what happens uh, that can be overridden if you know transaction accounting builder. In Fusion we have one module called a transaction accounting builder which is equivalent to charge generator of EBIS. So now the present seeded one is what? Whenever you put an item, item is coming up. But the moment you put the sub inventory, the sub inventory is expense account becomes the charge account. So customer may want it in a different manner. In which case, what happens? Let's say if it is an expense item, I want the account to be picked up only from the item and not from the sub inventory. Fine. If they say like this, we can very well customize it actually. Fine. That can be customized. Here also, what happens? We can very well customize it. So for which, what happens? You have to learn the transaction accounting builder now. Fine. If that module is known to you, then you can very well do it now. Fine. In EBIS, we have two modules. One is a charge account generator and then SLA. Here, it is a transaction accounting builder in SLA. Fine, the same thing is done. Now, if I put an expense sub inventory over here, now fine, let me change it to expense sub inventory. If I change it to expense sub inventory, then that sub inventory's expense account becomes the charge account. You can see 0, 3 ending in 110. That becomes the charge account. So, we have completed four ways of charging the charge account now. Any doubts on this now? PO charge account is obtained in four ways. One is what? Asset into an asset, asset into an expense. The expense into an asset and then expense into an expense. Now we'll go for the remaining two more ways now. <clears throat> Fine, there are two more ways. Now, if it is going to be a service item, if it is a service item, the purchase officer's expense account will become the charge account. If it is going to be a service item, the purchase officer's expense account will become a charge account. Fine, we'll go there and then see what are the expense account of the purchase officer. Fine, close it now. Then I'm going to go there. Switch responsibility, human resources now. We'll go to the human resources now. <clears throat> Oh, sorry. Switch responsibility to human resources. Now. We'll go to the human resources. Here, what happens? Go to the people and then enter maintain. Fine. Here, the purchase officer is what? Stock mispat. So, let us now query the expense account of this. So, that becomes the charge account for this. So, we're going to go to the expense account of the purchase officer. Stock mispat is the vision operations, operations employee actually. So, with which what happens? We can now see this one. It's a stock percentage, bad percentage, and then give it a tap. So stock mispat is the employee. And click on find now. So you'll be finding it out. And then you click on the assignments. You go to the assignments and then see the purchase officers. This thing. Like what happens? I'm going to buy an AMC contract. Then purchase officers' expense account will become the charge account. 
I'm going to buy what happens a cable digging. Fine, I have to dig the uh, what happens uh, uh, on the land, and then uh, dig it to approximately 1.5 meters, and then what happens? I lay the cable down. Fine, click on this assignment. So all these things are all service-based items. Fine, service items. We'll now see what exactly is going to happen. Fine, click on the assignment. So in the assignment, we will now go and then see this. It drop it down and then go to the purchase order information. We will not take up this account. Fine. Let us not take up this account. I will also make a modification. I will not make a modification. Let us say I will not put a 03. <coughs> I will not project tool. I will not say education. Fine. 05. I will not put on this. No fine. Sometimes what happens is the company may not be in the balancing segment and will be giving you an error actually. We will have to see to that what happens. I will not put camera. Okay. Let me put a 01 itself. Fine. Go there. Let us not keep it as a 01 itself. Because some balancing segments are not defined, will not be working as I go there. So this is the account which will be what happens. I will not make a correction now. I go there. Let me go there and save it. So let me take a copy of it now. Fine. This becomes a charge account. If you are going to make a service-based item, that is the fifth way of charging. So let us now take a copy of it now. Fine. In the meantime, what happens? I will now open up a notepad. A notepad. Let me open it up and then populate this item over here. Go there. So it's still saving now. I'm going to do it. <clears throat> the fifth way of saving. The sixth way is category level override. The category level override is not working at all for me. Even the uh, what happens, uh, uh, this is working in Fusion. The category level override is not working. I don't know where exactly I'm erroring out actually. Fine, somebody has to uh, do it now. Fine. And then tell me there's some area where I'm missing actually. Go there. This is working actually in Fusion. So this account which I have not kept fine zero one 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 zero seven six nine nine will become charge account. Fine, go there. You know, save. Fine, go there. Close it now. Fine, go there. Click on OK. And then not done. Fine, go there. Close it. Close it. And then come back to purchasing. Now, we'll now come back to purchasing. And then the sixth one is I will not see whether anything is set up. Go to the setups, financials. And then you go to the accounting. <clears throat> and then here, what happens? You go there. Expense account rules. This is the sixth way of charging. Now. Fine. So set up financials, accounting, expense account rules, the navigation. Fine. Double click on it. The sixth way of charging. So this is not set. I think probably we'll not see. If it is set, I will not remove it actually. <clears throat> the sixth way. This is called category level override. And that is not happening there. But employees expense account is something there. But this is a category level override, I'm unable to achieve it in the fusion actually. But maybe some mistake somewhere I'm making it. I'm not exactly sure. Fine here. There is nothing here now. Fine. Go there. We will now come to this part a bit later. Then now go and then see the fifth one now. Fifth one. So here, what happens? I will not make a purchase order now. For the fifth one, I am going to make it now. And go there. I will not put the supplier over here now. Fine. This is and percentage. And then give it up. And then here, here I am going to make a modification of the type. It is no more goods. It will be a services actually. Fine. Let us say consulting services. I am going to. The purchase basis is no more goods. It's a services now. Fine. It's a service purchase order. Fine. Go there. It is now depending upon the category actually. Fine. This is now category dependent. Fine. Go there. M I S C dot M I S C. Fine. Give it up. I will not put description fine test as a description fine. Go there. I will not give a common day. Let us say, uh, let us say 20 hours of consulting. I'm going to give it now. Fine. Go there. So the moment I save it, you can now see the charge account coming here itself now. It will not come over here. Fine. This will be as per this now. As per this. 01110 The purchase officer's expense account will become the charge account for service items actually. Fine. Go there now. Fine. You can now see the purchase officer's expense account is now becoming the charge account. Fine. I notice. This is the fifth way of charging now. For an expense item, as well. for an expense item, what happens? We'll have a category level override. We have what happens? This has a big one in one of the implementations. Fine. Uh, let us say for a construction company, we are done it. Fine. They say if you buy cement, it has to hit one account. If you buy in sand, it has to get another account. Fine. All these things, windows, whatever they are buying it, what happens? They want to have a different different charge account for different different items for the service based industry. So there, what happens? Uh, we had a lot of things. So we can even have what happens? The changes of this now. Let us say if the category is going to be misc misc, fine. He would like to have what happens? The first segment and then the last segment change. Let us say he can even say change any of the segments actually. In Fusion, what happens? Only the natural account can be changed. I don't know why it's so. In Fusion, what happens? We are able to only modify the natural account. But here in in Ebus, what happens? We can modify any segment of this. Now. Fine. We will now modify the first and last segment for this category level over right and go there. So this is the navigation now. So the navigation is uh, this now. Fine, go there. I will now go to the window. And then go to the navigator now. Fine, go there. We'll have a navigation. Fine. Yeah. Somebody is putting a chat message. Uh, yeah, sir. Uh, I'm not sure about uh, this, uh, so that's fine. <clears throat> 
uh, he is saying the expense items are basically what happens accrued only at the month end actually fine since it is a, it's not going to contribute towards your uh, what happens is sales and other things now fine even for the costing purposes so they normally accrue at the month end and then they will not report about how much has been accrued actually how much has not been paid and then paid amount is not one but uh, uh, what happens uh, we accrue it at the month end actually whereas the asset items are perpetual accrual you can't do it as and when you receive it the asset item gets accrued fine and then it will be getting accounted actually Fixed assets is as a different one. Fixed assets, I am not aware of it actually. I am not aware of the fixed assets actually. Fixed assets module, I am not aware of it actually. <clears throat> uh, enterprise assets and fixed assets, I am not aware of it. How is that really a function? Go to the setups and then go to the financials. And then here, whatever they go, they go to the accounting. And then this is the navigation. Fine. This is the sixth way of charging, you know, expense account rules. We can have a category level overhead for every segment. Whereas in Fusion, uh, it is only for natural account and that also is not working for me. We'll now, we'll now give it as a lab access for you. Fine. The new year, fine. When you click on it, it'll be coming. If I click on create now, for the first and last account, I'm going to do it now. If I click on create, I'm going to do it now. Category level override, I'm going to do it. Now. Click on create. Go there. And then here, accounting rule is for what happens? You are the misc misc. Fine. M I S C is only for item category, nothing else. Fine. It's only for the item category. You go there and then do it now. Fine. The misc misc is the one I'm choosing. Segment for the first segment, I'm not for the company segment. I'm going to do it now. Fine. So, here if you go on and see, there are multiple values there. So, let me make a change. I will not make a change to what happens 0 to I'll make a change to 0 to the company segment is now changed. Fine. Click on apply by which what happens for miss miss. If this is going to be the category of the purchase order, what happens? The company segment will be overridden to 0 to I click on create. Let me do the last segment also. I go there. I will not put misc <coughs> dot misc and give it a and then the segment name, I'm going to put the product. Whereas in, in Fusion, what happens? Only natural account can be changed. Nothing else is not is changeable. Basically. It can be customized, of course. Uh, by seeded one is not, I think it's fine. Go there, not put some value, 150. Some other value I'm putting. Click on it. So go there here. What is the value here? We are having 270. So the 270 will be drifted to 150. And then the 01 will now become 02 here. So we are given these two uh, changes now fine. Any segment can be modified over here now. Let us now go on and make a check of it now and go there. So let us now put again the same thing. <clears throat> go for the second line now and go there. I will now put it as a consulting. <clears throat> consulting, I'm putting it now and go there. So same shift F5, I'm now copying the previous field and go there. So shift F6 I have given, everything has now got copied now and go there. I will now make a change to 12 now and go there and then commit it. So the moment I save it, you can now see these two, the first and second, second last segment will be getting shifted now to zero to and that as is one forty. So these are the six many ways of charging the charge account now, fine. Uh, or, or uh, loading the charge account actually. Fine. So customers are very particular upon so many things for category level override. We have plenty of things. We have around thousand entries in one of the projects basically in that area. In this area, we have around thousand entries <coughs> based upon the end client's requirement actually. <coughs> Because they are very specific on expenses, basically. Well, against which account they expense it, what happens is they wanted to uh, account it to the appropriate level. So any segment can be overridden based upon the end client's requirement, actually. And that's it. So we completed <coughs> the charge accounting in six many ways in uh, what happens in EBIS now. <coughs> we will not set it up in uh, Fusion and then we will not demonstrate. Any doubts on this now? Good. <coughs> Fine. The charge account is not demonstrated in US. Let us now go on the setup in Fusion. So for the Fusion, what happens? I will now do this setup. Now, fine, go there. I own uh, Fusion Docs is there. Fine. I own this. Uh, this uh, document I will not send it to you because it's, uh, lately created. It is not available in your uh, in your document specifically. The Fusion Purchasing Accounting. I will not send it to you. <clears throat> so here, what happens? I am going to simulate these accounts over here. Now. Fine. Let me simulate these accounts. We already have only these four accounts: asset, liability, expense, and bonus equity is there. So let me create three more expense account and then two more asset accounts. I'm going to create three more expense account and then two more asset, asset accounts. I'm going to create now and go there. So let me create these three accounts over there and go there. Go to this navigation and then let us not do it. <coughs> I'm not close it now. So we'll now create this now. <coughs> so we'll now log in again. <coughs> Enter underscore EMP1. <coughs> So we are logging in now. We will now create the accounts, account values. Fine. The natural account values we are going to create now. Fine. Click on this now and then click on the setup and maintenance. And then it will now create the accounts. 
yep is manage percentage char percentage my value percentage set percentage my lord the navigation where we'll be doing it now and go there so manage chart of accounts value sets now and go there manage chart of accounts value sets go there we'll now query enter enter and go query now and then go there here i will not go on then directly go to the accounting segment the natural account segment where i go there I click on the manage values will be created my other values so here if you search it we already have four values over here now right zero one two three so as per the plan i'm going to make what four five one six as expense account now right four five six as and i click on plus now so let me get the four five six as an expense account i go there it is one thousand four one thousand four and then make it as an expense make it as an expense account type is expense one thousand four save and close it Similarly, one thousand five and one thousand six. Click on plus now. So let me get one thousand five and one thousand six. One thousand five, one thousand five. Go there, and then I make it as an expense. So click on save and close now. And then uh, click on plus now. One thousand six. I'm going to create now. One thousand six. Go there and create it. So all the three things are expense accounts basically. Account type is expense. Click on save and close. So now what happens? We'll now create two more asset accounts. Man, one thousand seven, one thousand eight. Click on plus now. So let us now create one thousand seven and one thousand eight as an asset account. One thousand seven, one thousand seven. Account type is an asset account. Click on save and close. And then one thousand eight and go to create. Click on plus now. One thousand eight. Then go there. I'll now make it as an asset account. Then go there. Click on save and close now. And then I'll now create one more account as an expense for what happens here. Category level over rate, but it's not working actually. Finally, it may also that's why I've not demonstrated. I need to create one more account. One thousand nine as an expense account now. I will now leave it to others. Now, fine. Let somebody tell me about where exactly I'm erroring out. I'm not saying I'm not making it as an expense account. Now. This I'm going to do. This is not working actually. So, what happens? I not have written there actually. Fine, this is an expense. One thousand nine is an expense account. Fine, click on seven close. So, in addition to this, what happens? You know, I made one more thing, one more account as what well. tenth account as what happens? One thousand nine as an expense account. I will save it now. One thousand nine is also expense. Account. Now, let us now create. We already have a asset sub inventory. We'll now go there and see. It's not fine. Now go there and see what is asset sub inventory. Click on seven close now. We will now see what is the asset sub inventory name exactly. We are doing now. Fine, go there. So click on what happens. Manage sub inventories and locate us now. Manage sub percentage, lock percentage one. This is exactly behaving like what we have in Ebus now. And go there. Let us now put it our organization. We'll now create one asset sub inventory and one expense sub inventory. Organization is what? Yen one zero one is an organization now. I will now put my public my organization over here now. So it is Yen underscore asset is a sub inventory. Fine. Let us now go there and then make a change now. Fine. It is Yen underscore asset. Fine. Everything is in small now. Fine. Go there. Yen N ten underscore asset. Fine, what is Yen ten underscore asset? Fine, give a save now. And then I'll now create a expense sub inventory also. I will now make it as what? It is a Yen ten. Oh, come it is now becoming capital here. Yen ten. Oh God, underscore expense. Ah, <clears throat> uh, expense. I'm going to put it now. Fine, let us now make a change to e small n now. Small n. Here also, and the first letter automatically becomes the capital actually. Go there, and then save it now. This what is. So I will now make this as ex enter an expense. I am going to create it now. Fine, go there, commit. So let me create an expense account. Fine, expense sub inventory. Click on plus now. Fine, let me create an expense sub inventory. <coughs> it is yen ten underscore expense. Fine, go there. Go expense exp yen yes. So he he is not coming. So there also what happened? I have no idea. <laughs> Somebody is speaking now. Fine. So only your PS is there. Fine. Take a copy of it and then put down space. Paste it and go there. Now what happens? If you remove the asset sub inventory tick mark, it becomes the expense sub inventory. That's it. Fine. Asset sub inventory is now removed. Fine. By this, what happens? It becomes the expense sub inventory. Go there. The character limitations. We can talk to technical and then they can enhance it. Actually, fine. click on save and close. That can be enhanced. Close. Somebody is speaking to me. Yeah, I couldn't hear me. So, is an enter asset and an expense expense. Okay, my. 
us. Now, we have simulated these two conditions, fine. We'll not create an item also, fine. Let us not create. Uh, we already have item one as an asset item. So let me create an expense item also. Let us not go there and then create an expense item also. <clears throat> and click on done now. I will not go to the area here and then here, whatever we go there and then put down this place now. So go to the product management and then go to the product information management. Product information management. And then let me create an expense item over here now. So we are simulating each and everything, and then afterwards, what happens? We will now simulate the accounts also, and then set it up, and then see this now. So click on this uh, task carousel, and then click on create item. I am now going to create an expense item. So organization is n zero zero. Fine, we had to create only on the master now. Fine, go there, and then to the root item class. <clears throat> You're putting the root item class over here now. Fine, go there. And then the template comes automatically because of the default template is not coming up. Fine, give a tab. <clears throat> fine, it's not coming up. Fine, click on OK now. <clears throat> it comes over here. Let me create an item. Fine, there's an expense item. Fine. Item one is an asset item. It is a yen 10 underscore the expense underscore item. It's an expense item. I will now say it's an expense item. Fine, go there. So to make it as an expense item, what happens? We had to remove the inventory asset value. Fine, like in this direction. If you see this now, so if you go there and see this now, if inventory asset value is off, it becomes an expense item. So inventory asset value, I'm going to do it. Similarly, what happens in the sub is all not here, fine, here in this place. If you remove the inventory asset value, it becomes an expense item. And then if the asset sub inventory tick mark is removed, it is an expense sub inventory. So the inventory asset value, let me remove it now, fine. I will now make it as X now, fine. You go to the specifications now. Here, what happens? I will now go there. I will now make on the inventory area, fine, go to the inventory area. It may not be in the inventory area, actually. Fine, it has to be in the, in the in what's called, in the other one. Fine, we'll now go to the, what's called, the manufacturing area. In the manufacturing, we'll be having it. Manufacturing as a clubbing of many things now, by bomb, dip, everything is now costing, bomb, dip, costing, everything clubbed together, this thing. So here, I will now make the inventory asset value as no, no. Then it becomes an expense item. So this is an expense item. This is the only way, yeah, do it now, fine, go there. So the remaining, I'm now keeping it as such, now fine, go there. So leave it as such. <clears throat> In the purchasing also, what happens? We'll be having some this price, whatever is coming, let it be okay. So in the manufacturing area, what happens? I'm now putting this inventory asset values are no, then it becomes an expense item. Fine, go there, go to the associations, then let me associate with the this thing. The child doll. So click on actions and then go to select an ad. <clears throat> so let me associate to the child org N101 and then you enter now. This is child org. I'm choosing it now. Fine, click on apply and then done. So the moment you save it, what happens? The category will now come. Fine, click on save now. So n10 underscore expense underscore item. Everything is in small letters, remember? <coughs> Fine, what else? You go there and then see the categories will be saved. So for the category level override of what somebody has now made as n28 desktop computer. Fine, for this category, I would like to I would like to override it. It's not working for me in Fusion. Fine, I would like to override with this value now. Fine, with this value of what, 1009. I have not set it up, but it is not working. I don't know where exactly I'm erroring out. Fine, please teach me on this part. The remaining are working, but here it's not working. <clears throat> so EXP and yes, only. Fine, not e. Fine, not yes. So everything is now ready. Now what happens? We'll now go out and set up the accounts. Fine. All the accounting has to be set only on what happens your uh, financials area and the cost management actually. Fine, we'll now go out and set up this. Fine. So first, set up the material account. Middle account at the sub middle level. Middle account, the sub middle level, we're going to set it up and go there. We'll now set up the middle account, the sub middle level. Go there. So this is all done now. Fine, go there. Save and close now. Fine, save and close. By which whatever item is now created with the appropriate. It is N28. Fine, something like that. Fine, go there. And then we'll now go on the setup. Fine, click on the uh, name and then you go to the setup and maintenance. Remember, accounting has to be set via projects only. And there is another way also. Through FSM also, you can do it now. Fine. If you find another way, Always, my navigation is always not correct. Fine. If you find a better way, please do it as per this. Fine. Somebody will not teach you some other version. Fine. By, I am now conversant with this. I am not doing it as such. Not fine. N10. And then here, I will now go to manage mapping set. Now. Manage percentage. Map percentage. Set percentage. Fine. Enter it. I am going to make it now. Manage mapping set. So that too, uh, with the manufacturing, you go via cost accounting. Now. Fine. Here, manufacturing is now showing cost accounting. This manufacturing is showing receipt accounting. Fine. We'll now come to the receipt accounting a bit later now. Fine. Later on, we'll now come to this. So go to the managing and then go to the cost accounting. Fine. Click on the manage mapping set. Now. In the manage mapping set, what happens? We'll now choose the manage mapping sets. Fine. And then we'll now go to the task. Already the scope is selected. It must be cost management. Remember. Fine. It must be cost management. So almost all the accounts are set over here now. 
and uh, what happens we have a document on this now fine how the accountings are set now fine go there accounting entries all modules you can now see accounting entries all modules this is the one this document will explain you about how to set up different accounts and different different places what are the different accounts which are involved for all your transactions now fine double click on it accounting entries all modules if you go on and have a look at it now fine it shows you everything fine here i am in the ptp process in the ptp process what happens the receipt accounting will now hit receiving the accrual raw material ppv receiving ap accrual liability invoice and the liability to cash all these accounts will be set if you go to the intra transfers these accounts will be set now fine if in the intra transfers what happens this many accounts are there now fine go there we will have this many accounts to be set now fine in transit inventory to sub inventory then intra transfers fine all these things account so all these things will be set by the financiers this is for this now and then for the sales work order this is the accounts and then for the drop shipment this is the one fine for the btb order is the one and then for a otc life cycle these are the accounts now adjustment account so so many accounts they will be setting it actually fine they will be setting so many accounts on this now so you have to also follow what happens is all, all the responsibility of the financial team now but we are now seeing only the purchasing accounting and nothing else we are seeing now so the purchasing accounting similarly what happens is they will be setting a lot of accounts so many accounts fine from maybe around hundreds of accounts they will be setting it on the manage mapping side actually we we'll go there and see this now so you go there and then go to the task now fine right? now you are seeing only purchasing accounting so every module will be having the accounting setting so you must be a financial guy and then you must know what what to set right? that document will explain you what are the accounts they have to set now fine go there i'm going to do the manage mapping side here you can see hundreds and hundreds of accounts are there here now everything starting in a is coming and go there it will not explain you it will not show everything immediately fine go there a c and then of course you go down you will be you will be switching switching each and every account in the real in the real scenario fine they will be setting it each and then only what happens uh, their uh, financial statement generation will be very proper now fine they will not set up each and everything there in this place so here the total activity has been given to financials only it is not others so go there search it and then here what happens i am going to begin our setting now and go there so let us now set middle account sub inventory level and what is middle account sub inventory level and go there fine i am going to say uh, middle uh, material account fine material and then i am going to give a query now fine middle account the sub inventory level let me set it up and go there we now simulate the situation exactly now fine go there middle account sub inventory this sub inventory so middle account sub inventory i am going to set it up now fine click on the middle account sub inventory i am going to set it up now so i'll be setting it up as is now fine it will be an asset at 1007 for this now fine go there we now set it up fine go there i will now click on charge account and now give a plus now fine let me add it now the charge account i am adding it now then go there let me set it up now fine go there drop it down i will now choose n10 now so n10 i am going to choose it now and go there i'll be choosing the n10 charge of accounts fine go there afterwards i will now give a small save now click on save And then go down. I will not do it here in the bottom. What am I going to do? It. I click on plus now. So the first entry I'm going to make it now. Fine, go there. <clears throat> Fine. The sub inventory, secondary sub inventory. It is what? It is N10 underscore asset. Fine, that is what asset. So I will now put what N10. Here there is no list of value available here. This is all mistake actually. We have tried it. If you make a mistake, it will not come at all. Fine. Inventory organization is what? N101 is the organization. So here. What are the chart of accounts instance? I'm going to give it as 1007 now. Fine, go there. 10 iPhone, 100 iPhone, 1007. I'm putting it. Fine, go there. I will now give a save. Fine, let's give a save. Go to the top and then give a save now. So the first is now set actually. Fine, we are now setting up first. First one is now set. Fine, go there. And then we'll now go and then see this now. Fine, next what happens? Middle account. Are there for the expense? Fine, middle account sub inventory again same. For the expense, what happens? I'm going to say one two three four. Fine, it is N10 underscore the expense. So click on plus now. So let me add this now. So I'll now add up now. Fine, go there. It is N10 underscore EXPN. <coughs> yes, only expense account. So it is N101. Go there. So here I'm going to give what is the value? 1004. Which is the 1004 is an expense account. Fine, go there. It's an expense account. Fine, go there. It is 10 iPhone, 100 iPhone, 1004. Fine, we give it. Go there. So we are given these two accounts. One is an asset account, one is an expense account. We have set it up. Fine, go there. So click on save and close. So the sub inventory level we are now completed now. So here what happens? Uh, we are going to do uh, six set setups now. Fine. First two setups are now complete now. Fine. These two setups are complete. Fine. Is it called asset into an asset, and then asset into an expense now. Now what happens? Uh, middle account the org level I am going to set up now. Fine. At the org level I am going to set up and go there. No doubt. So middle account at the org level I am going to set up. Fine. Click on the middle account org. Click on it. We are going to set up. At the org level, we are going to do it now. So we already set it up now. Fine, go there and then find out our N10 now. Fine, go there. So let us now query the N10 now. Fine, go there. 
Here there is no query at all. Query example must have been given. Now. Why they are not given the query example? It's very bad. <clears throat> so this all somebody will now create what happens? A, a, what happens? A SR. They will not do that one. I don't know why they have not done those things. We had no click, 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 and then identify our end ten actually. The end ten. We had identified one. Go there and then identify the end ten. level Fine. I will now put two different accounts for this. No fine. This was the expense account, the submit level. Fine. Go there. No wait. Fine. No done. Fine. We now made this what? 1008 now. 1008 has been made now. Fine. Go there. So let us now save and close. Now we will now see what the next is what? The expense account at the submit level. Fine. Go there. We will now query for the expense account. Fine. Go there. Query for the expense account. It is the expense account. Fine. The expense. And then query for it. So expense account at the submit level, we are going to set up. I click on this expense account at the submit level. So there will be two submit notices which will be setting it up now. Fine, go there. So let us now set it up. Fine, go there. So in this place, we are going to add it now. Fine, it's not there. Fine, click on plus now. Let us add it now. Org level, we already have it now. Fine, here is not there. Fine, go down. And then yen 10, I'm going to choose it. Fine, go there. Yen 10, I'm choosing it now. And then let me save now. Fine, this state, let me save now. And then go down. I remember financials has to do a lot of work to it. Fine. Not a small work. It's a really a very tough one, but I'm fine. Go there. Click on plus now. Even though it's not your responsibility, just try and then do it now. Fine. Go there. What else? So the expense account at the sub inventory. Fine. What else? So the expense item into an asset sub inventory. So asset asset sub inventory, I'm going to put it now. Fine. Go there. Expense item to an expense sub inventory. Uh, so this is the asset sub inventory actually. For me, the asset sub inventory is what n underscore asset. Now. Fine. Go there. Click on plus now. I don't know. Put it now. Fine. It's already there actually. And go there. So let us now put it. This is the N10 underscore asset. Fine. Go there. Organization is capital N101. It's capital number. Fine. So what is the account I'm going to give it now? Fine. So expense item into an asset subunitary is what? 1004. I'm putting it now. Fine. fine. I'm now putting it as 1004. I don't know why I repeated actually. Fine. Go there. Let us now put it as 1004. Doesn't matter. Fine. Go there. I will not. Otherwise, I will not make a change to 1009. Now. Fine. We put this 1009. I don't make a change now. Fine, go there. Commit. So let us put it as 1009 is an go there. It is 10 iPhone, 100 iPhone, 1009. I'm putting it now. And then the next one, what happens? I'll now put yen 10 underscore EXPEN. Yes. Okay. Fine, go there. I will now put the organization over here now. Fine. N101. Go there. So for the expense item, what happens is 1005. Fine. Expense item into an expense sub inventory. Fine. What else? Expense item into an expense sub inventory. I'm now putting 1005 over here. Fine. 1005. So 10 iPhone, 100 iPhone, 1005. And then go there. I'll now save it now. Fine, go there. So 10, so this one. Fine, go there. 1009 and 1005, I have put it now. Fine, go there. So different expense accounts I put it. Fine, go there. I will now click a save now. Fine, click on save. And then save and close. Fine, no doubt. Now what happens? I will now go on and do it now. Fine, go there. Next is what? Expense account is the org level. Now. Fine, the org level, I'm going to put it now. Fine, go there. The expense account is the org level. We even have the item level also. Fine, that is the lab access for you. Fine, go there and do it. Fine, go there. Click on plus now. <coughs> Click on plus. I'll now put it now. Fine. Remember, accounting is not an easy job. Fine. If you don't do it properly, you will not be getting the financial statement generation. Your uh, trial balance itself will be giving you lots of issues. Now, fine. They will not take a lot of time in setting it up. Actually, fine. Go there. So, EN10. I'm going to put it. 
So by that way, what happens? You are really lucky actually. Fine, you don't have that much of a complexity as far as accounting is concerned. No, no need to worry at all. Bindas, fine. You set up and you perform the transaction directly. So they click on plus now. So at the org level, I'm going to give it now. Fine. At the org level, I'm going to give it as 1,600 as now. Fine. At the org level. So it is only org level means what? Only organization, no sub inventory is coming. Fine. Go there. It is a 10 iPhone, 100 iPhone, 1,006. We are putting it fine. as per the plan. You know, putting it as 1,006. Fine. Go there. Click on save. So click on save and then save and close. So we are now set up the simulated all the six conditions over here now. Fine. All the six conditions are simulated. All six. Now we'll not start to do this now. Fine. So we have the items also ready. And then we have the uh, this thing account also. All the six uh, simulations are now done now. Now let us see how they are getting populated in the requisitions of that. So then we'll now open up one more tab region. Fine. Now leave it as such now. Fine. Now come back again here. Fine. So go there. It's E and then enter now. Let us now simulate it. The simulation is now done. We are going to make a test of it now. Fine, click on it now. We are not testing it now. So go there. Click on it. So click on this and then go to the purchasing procurement and then go to the requisitions. Now. Purchase requisition and go to it. Click on purchase requisition. Yes, sir. Here. Let us now create an item now. Let us now create a purchase requisition directly now. So we are going to set test up all these things now. So click on the requisition line entry. <coughs> So I will not put the asset item over here. Now. First is asset item. Fine, go there. En10. Let me put the asset item. Fine. Item one is asset item. Fine. You go there. Item one is an asset item. Fine, go there. Uh, we'll not do it. Fine, go there. And then uh, click on add to requisition. Now. Fine, go there. Asset item and then asset submit notify. Click on this one. And then here there is one more uh, thing is also required. Fine, go there. I will not go on and see. So if asset item to asset sub inventory, what happens? Asset sub inventory means what? One thousand seven must be the charge. Fine, go there. Click on edit and submit. And then have a look at it in the bottom now. We'll be having 1007 as a charger. Fine, go there and then see this now. Fine, 1007 is now coming. Fine. Asset item at an asset sub inventory. If an asset item is going to be an expense sub inventory, it must be 1004 now. Fine, go there. Asset item at an expense sub inventory. Fine, go there and then make a change now. Fine, go there. Asset item only, now make it as an expense. And then the moment I give expense and then save now. Fine, give a save now. Click on save. In the requisition form, what happens if you give a save? It has to become 1004 now. Fine, that's now become 1004. Fine, this is now become 1004. So these two are now tested now. We will now go on and test this now. Fine, asset item into an what happens? Uh, asset item into an asset sub inventory at the org level now. Sometimes what happens? They may not even give anything at the sub inventory level at all. If this is missing, what happens? 1008 will become the charge account for both asset and expense items. If the sub inventory accounts are missing, then what happens? It will not pick up this account as a charge account for both asset and expense item. Fine. What is how the fusion has been designed actually? Fine. So the org level there also we have this now. Fine. We have the org level also there. I have not tested it actually. Fine. We have if sub inventory levels are missing, what happens? It will not take away from the org level actually. Fine. So for both items. So what I will do is here I go there. I will now query for the what happens? The material account sub inventory. Fine. Go there. Material, and then I will now make a search for it now. I will now go to the sub inventory level. Let me disable both the times. So, fine, go there, go to the place, and then let me disable both the things. At the sub inventory level, let me disable both the things. Go there, go down. We will now go to the N10 level. Now, fine, go there. N10. What? Kurin is really a very horrible thing here. <clears throat> let us keep on doing it, doing it now. The N10, if it comes, tell me, fine, if I'm missing it, I'm not giving a down, down like this. Now, fine, go there. N10. Come on. Ah, it has come. It's the last end. Fine, go there. So what I will do is I will now put uh, what happens the end date for simulating it now. Fine, go there. So let us now put an end date for this now. Fine, end date I'm going to put for both 1004 and 1007. So these two things will be uh, end date now. Fine, go there. I will now put an effective end date for simulation actually. Fine, go there. Let us now put some uh, some uh, three four days before because what happens uh, sometimes what happens uh, up to today end it will not work. 14 means what up to 14th end it will not work now actually. So I will now put some uh, previous days please. Now all of the both the accounts are end dated actually. So if these two are missing, then what happens? It will not pick up from the org level the charge account now. 1008 will be the charge account. Fine, go there. 1004 and 1007 are disabled actually. Fine, go there. Save and close. Now let us now make a check of it. We'll now go there. Click on the shopping position. Fine, go there. We'll now make a check of it. So click on what happens? Go to the shop. Then it will now create a new requisition now. We'll now get a new requisition. Click on shop. And then click on the requisition and let us, let us now delete it now. I will now put one for the asset and then one for the expense. Fine, go there. <clears throat> I will now put item fine, N10. 
I will not put item one as another item. And let me add the requisition. And add the requisition. <coughs> now they are missing. Fine, click on the evidence submit. And then here, if you go and then see on the requisition line, what happens? We can now say 1008 will be the charge. And then even if you make a change to expense items also, it will be the same thing. That is the live access for you. Fine. 1008. So if these two are missing, what happens? It's not going to pick up from this one. The third scenario is tested. Now we will now populate on the on the requisition an expense item. Fine. Expense item into an asset sub inventory. The fourth one I'm going to simulate it. Fine, go there. You know, right? Fine, click on C. Fine, go there. <clears throat> we'll now go to the shop now. These uh, org level also is available in the EBIS also. In uh, EBIS also is available. I have not tested the org level at all. Fine. Uh, EBIS also we have the if sub inventories are missing, naturally it will not pick up from org level. Fine. The defaulting are almost same, like what we have in what happens in EBIS and Fusion. Now what happens? The expense item into an what happens into an asset sub inventory. Now, right? The fourth scenario we're going to test it now. Fine, go there. So we'll now delete it. And then you go to the requisition line entry. And then we'll now put the expense item over here. When you enter, we'll now put the expense item. Expense item over here. And then whenever you're putting it, what happens in the bottom, you'll be getting an account, but that account may not be exactly correct now. Fine. Uh, it may be sometimes correct. It may not be exactly correct now. Fine. It's not coming up. It is now picking up from what? Uh, uh, as a, is now assuming this is a but always uh, see inside now. Fine. In the in the bottom, the defaulting uh, may not be exactly correct. So the defaulting will change on the requisition actually. Fine. What is this is also correct here actually. It is correct only because it is now assuming as a sub inventory. Fine. Okay. It's correct. But sometimes what happens? It doesn't show properly. So in this case, what happens? You add the requisition, then inside you have a look at it. You go to that requisition there only it will now reflect correctly actually and go there. You know, the scenario number four is now getting tested now. And go there. Add to requisition. You're adding it now. Remember, the charge account is a very important uh, one for some of the customers basically. Because they want to know against which account they have spent the money. So you have to exactly populate as per the requirement actually. And go there. Now what happens? It is 1009. So let us now make a change to expense now. So once you change it, what happens? It will now become 1005 now. Actually. Make a change for the sub unit expense now. When make a change to expense 1005, has to become either save it now. Let me find here save it now. Fine, go there. Click on save now. Once when you save it, what happens? It will not become an expense account. Fine, go there. It's 1005, is now coming. Fine, now, the final scenario is what I will now uh, put a uh, what's called a end date for these two accounts. Then what happens? It will now pick up from the org level. Fine, go there. So let us go there and then put an end date for this now. Fine, go there. Such <coughs> expense items I'm going to put it now. Expense. Go there and then click on search. We are searching it. Fine. And the sub inventory level, I will not put an end date for this now. Fine. Go there. The sub inventory level for the expense items, I am not putting an end date now. Fine. Go there. So go to the expense account sub inventory level. Let me put an end date on this now. And then this will all again be decided by the financial team. Now. Fine. Whether to put it at the sub inventory level or org level, everything they will decide actually. You only have to sit and watch coolly. So go there, N10, the chart of accounts, and so you know, let me put an end date for both accounts. And go there, N10 chart. Fine, go there, you can put an end date. <clears throat> and then you can even add one more account as what? As a default account if this is missing, actually. Fine, go there. So what I will do is I will now add one more thing. And then it will be irrespective of the accounts, basically. Irrespective of the accounts, fine, go there. I will not put an account, let us say, 10 iPhone, 100 iPhone, what happens? Little, some account I'm putting it, let us say, 1,000, I'm putting it down. And then if you make it as a default, if you make it as a default, it becomes a default account for all the things. Now. Fine. It is now become. So if you are going to transact on the expense on the N01, this is the account. And then asset on this one is the account now. If it is not on these two things, the default will fire. Remember, the default is going to fire now. So the default will fire if these conditions are not met, actually. You can even set it as a default. It's a default one. If you are not specified any specific thing, what happens? The default will fire. It is equivalent to what happens your uh, what happens your copy. If you go to the EBIS, what happens? There? We have one functionality there. Fine. We have we copy accounts. Fine. Go there. Go to the inventory. In the inventory organization parameters, what happens? There? We have set up organization parameters. If you go on and see this now, for M1 or we have tools copy organization. This is used mainly for copying the accounts. Actually, fine. When you do the tools copy, what happens? There? All the accounts of your master org gets populated on this place, and then your interog accounts, and then all other accounts, whatever is there, everything getting copied. Now. So this is equivalent to the copy functionality of EBIS of a default, sitting as a default. Fine. So there is a even more easy actually. Right? There is no need to copy. There is no copy functionality available here now. But what happens if we can set up as a default. So if you are transacting on expense 101, this will be the account. Asset 101, this will be the account. If you have not specified anything, the default will fire actually. The default will fire. 
fine. When you set as a default, that will fire. Fine. I'll go there. I will not delete it now. Fine. So for this simulation, I don't want it actually. I'm not deleting it actually. <clears throat> and then here I'll not put an end date over here. Fine. For this simulation, I'm putting end date now. Fine. Some previous date I'm putting it as an end date now. So arg level will fire now. Fine. If you see, if you put an end date like this now. What happens since sub inventory is not available, org level will fire. So discuss the financials about when they will now give it the sub inventory level, when they will now give it the org level. Fine. Everything they will decide actually. <clears throat> and I'm, I'm disabling everything as a sub inventory level. Fine. Check on seven close now. So since, since these two sub inventories are now disabled, fine. One thousand nine. So one thousand six will be the account. Fine. What's expense item into an asset or expense sub inventory. Whatever it is, what happens? So one thousand six will fire. The sixth case we are going to make a test of it now. Fine. Go there. Let us not test it now. Fine. Go there. So let us not test it. Go there. Click on done now. So you know, test it now. Go further, <coughs> and then uh, uh, expand side. Okay, this is okay. We'll now go there and then set it up. Go there, for test it. So go to the shop, and then we'll now create a new requisition. Go there. Let us delete it now. Fine. Go there. So click on the requisition line entry, <coughs> and then I will not put an asset item over here now. Fine. So both the things sub inventory level we are not given anything at all, and so what? We go there and then see this now. Fine. Go there. Add that to the requisition now. And then again, don't see in this area, but in the requisition, in the in the real requisition, what happens? Yeah, I will go there. Now, this 1006 will fire. Fine. 1008 is now coming. Fine, go there. By the way, what is the account you're given now? 1006 has to fire now. But 1008 is now coming. Fine. It is an asset item, it is an asset sub inventory. Fine. Uh, I have not changed the expense sub inventory. Fine. I will not change the sub inventory expense. Fine, go there. I will not change it to expense. Fine. Go there. I will not change it to expense. So if it is expense, it will not pick up from the sub inventory level. Fine. If it is expense, click on save now. Sorry, I'm going to shop. I want to give a save now. <laughs> so click on it and submit now. <clears throat> I'll now go there directly. And then give a save now and then see this now. Fine. And then mistake there. <clears throat> so let's go there and then see this now. Fine. Go there. Give a save now. So I will now put it on what is called an expense sub inventory. What happens? It has to become what 1006 actually fine expense item into an expense sub inventory fine it is an expense asset item into an what happens expense item into an expense sub inventory okay item itself is an expense item. sorry sorry i have not done a proper simulation actually fine simulation has not been done properly fine go there i will not give a shop now fine it is an expense item I'm sorry <clears throat> go there put the requisition line entry and click on requisition line entry and then i will know how to populate what sorry Expense item into an expense sub inventory. I will not put the expense item over here now. I go there. Expense item. Expense item. I will now add to the requisition now. And click on it and submit. So here I will not change it to an expense sub inventory. And then I will not save. save. So 1006 has to come now. Fine. It is already coming, I think. And we will save now. Because it is not picking up from any other sub inventories actually. Fine. So expense item into an what happens into an expense sub inventory and then or expense item into an what happens these two conditions are not valid at all. Fine. Expense item into an what happens asset sub inventory 1009 has been disabled and so what happens so 1006 is now getting populated. Fine. You can now say 1006 is populated. Whether it is going to be an asset sub inventory and expense sub inventory in both the cases what happens 1006 only will populate because sub inventory level we are not given any account at all. We are indeed actually. So we are tested it for what this one. So test it for what happens expense item into an what happens this is what is expense item into an asset sub inventory and then expense item into an expense sub inventory. We have put it. So both these accounts are not coming at the org level only it's coming. So all of them are tested. Now category is not working. So I'll leave no 10 10 now. So what happens? I will now call day. We will now continue on this accounting tomorrow. Now fine. So the working part we are completed. The non-working part we are going to see tomorrow. Fine. B present tomorrow and then what happens uh, tell me where exactly mirroring or I'm set to, I meant to set it the category levels I meant to set it now fine I will not show it to you fine. all these things I'll show it to you is it clear the accounting part fine. is a very tough one for financials actually they'll be setting so many things we are now only seeing in reality what happens uh, they'll be seeing for uh, what happens your intro transfers your miscellaneous transfers your sub inventory transfers and then each and everything on the supply chain actually fine. whatever you do everything every account will be set by them as per the document which I given you. They say that what happens, there is no change at all from EVS to Fusion actually. Everything is same actually. Is it all clear? I know that is a very tough topic, but even then what happens, it is not your cup of tea actually. Fine. 
he need not have to worry much about it fine uh, uh, as long as you know the concept it's okay fine in our company what happens when i was working in iaps consulting since i know these concepts what happens they have now pushed all these things to us now fine you know, the supply chain team only is now setting up all the accounts actually there but what happens they verify at the at the higher level at the financial level what happens they perform their financial state they they make a trial balance and then make a check of it whether everything is correct or not fine with some dummy accounts with the dummy they have some uh, what happens ready made test scenarios basically with that what happens they test our accounts are coming up properly or not so on the they will now convert the purchase order and then they will now receive it and then afterwards they will now make a test of it but setting up is uh, in our uh, but what happens the customization is with them now if they feel that this is not should be what happens if they say that uh, it should be some other way what happens they customize it with the help of tab the transaction accounting builder and then the transacting transaction accounting definition tab and tad are set by the financial team actually <clears throat> everybody is stun bound at fine anybody can uh, reply me that you have understood it <laughs> it's uh, quite clear um, very good very good fine that's kind fine if it's clear it's excellent actually fine but again it's not your cup of tea but, even then what happens but, you have to know it actually yeah but we need to have a practice uh, mm, yeah, once we yeah. have it then uh, we raise a question yes, uh, sir one quick question uh, if we have a, so now we have annotated uh, different options yeah, yeah, yeah so in in reality we may have multiple scenarios right exactly exactly now talk to financials about how they set it up from fine uh, they may set up at the supplemental level or org level uh, depending upon the actual uh, their practices actually their accounting because practice. because in uh, in our company right uh, so therefore one of the projects uh, this charge of account uh, auto population right yeah, yeah. so they said it should be done by the procurement for, uh, consultant not by the finance yeah, yeah. so they they bang their head and they set it up various scenarios we're talking about the ebis or fusion 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 oh god okay fine in fusion i uh, see atul is now saying that what happens they are asking the procurement consultant to set up actually that is not correct actually uh, you should not ask the procurement consultant to set up all these things uh, because see just because you are having the what happens uh, in the navigation to manage mapping set it is not correct actually because accounting has to be done only by the financial team they only have to account and then show it to the company so the setups must be done only with the financial team but okay uh, if you are requesting is a different thing and then uh, doing it is a different thing but uh, what happens if you make a mistake the financial team is only answerable actually you know but okay <clears throat> but uh, no no hitting the charge of account and uh, other accounts material account and other account yeah, yeah. don't you think it's a part of a procurement to, uh, because uh, see, no. when uh, you in the when... is what they have done is in fusion what they have done is they have removed every accounting entry in your this thing now actually <clears throat> and siraj is now huh? uh for the normally account. normally user uh, said that uh, um, no you see siraj is siraj is a financial to... consultant you can just see siraj is a financial consultant financial has to sign up and then for the accounting entries they only have to do it now fine because they are respond they are going to generate all the financial statements basically month end what happens they will now do the everything even the month end profit and loss or whatever it is it is their responsibility and then if you set it up wrongly if you put a wrong account over there and then if it is not defaulting properly what happens they are answerable they will only ask them my particular charge account is not getting charged for cement for sand for steel my why so you can they can't say the procurement man has given a wrong entry fine that is not a correct way down they have to take the responsibility okay load wise okay we can take up the load but uh, what happens you also have to make a what happens a screenshot and then send it to the manager fine that is your uh, moral responsibility this is what i have set at different levels i have put a end date now fine what happens in some cases there is a new sub inventory which is getting created and there is no accounting entry at all for which what happens it will not pick up on the org level actually your particular sub inventory is accounting entry is not there what happens they may even ask you to set up a default account or otherwise it will not pick up from the org level again how it is being practiced you have to only sit with the along with the financials and then do it now i am only thinking about how where to set up what but what exactly is being practiced you have to do it now fine long it is not only for procurement it is for each and everything let us say uh, your miscellaneous transactions your sub inventory transactions your interop transfers and your move orders and then uh, this is on the inventory side and then afterwards uh, from the uh, what happens your uh, order management side you will be doing the what happens the shipments a drop shipments your back to back ordering and then uh, what happens everything will come into picture actually your cogs account has to sit uh, properly there are plenty of accounts are there actually
I hope uh, that things are clear now. Fine. We'll now be continuing on the accounting tomorrow. No? Fine. Tomorrow I'll now show you where exactly I'm getting struck. Actually, fine. These are all okay. Fine. Some other some other place is not exactly working. Especially the category level override is not working for me at all. I don't know what to do now. Uh, there may be some because this is a must actually. Category level override is a must. Fine. I don't know where the, why, there may be some additional setups that are required. I think probably that is not coming for me. I'll not show you tomorrow. So bye for now, and then we'll now go hard on this. Now we're now into tougher and tougher zones actually. Fine. <clears throat> so it'll not take a longer time for you to basically sit and understand it, and then practice it. Fine. Exactly practice as as I'm telling it. Fine. And then the actual practices in the field, what happens only with the financials, you have to discuss about how they are going to set up different accounts and this. Bye for now. We'll now meet tomorrow. Bye now. Bye. Bye.